Holy second left alien on Batman. Hello there, my little scarecrows, and welcome back to Build the Boys. We now have issue 42 of Hushet's Build the Batmobile Tumblr. In this one, we are carrying on with the spoiler uh, section. We're building the second left aileron. Now, this looks just as fiddly as the first <laughs> aileron, so that's going to be interesting. Tiny, tiny screws. You need three hands for this one. Um, but it is what it is. Uh, we are just plowing through this one to get this uh, to get this all done because we have got the next six coming up. Sorry there's been a delay, but everything that could go wrong has gone wrong in Bilbo and the Boys Towers for the past couple of weeks, including Norovirus ripping through the family. <laughs> and it's like, oh, lovely stuff. Uh, but back now and everything's full steam ahead. So the next six are due literally any day. Um, but we're going to get the, the final three done of this month's pack. Um, but by the end of this, we will have a very lovely chunk of uh, Tumblr. Um, exciting times. So um, let's get this one open. Let's get this one built. At the end of it, we'll be talking about the release of The Dark Knight. And we're going to talk all about the impact that it had on, uh, on superhero cinema as a whole. Let's get this one open. Let's get this one built. Right, let's take a look at what comes inside 42, uh, 62, sorry. Uh, not a lot. As expected, um, but you know, it is what it is. Let's see what we're dealing with. Bunch of plastic. So we've got the alien on there. Uh, we've got the struts there. We've got some WP screws and some AP screws. That's it. So let's bring the uh, work we've been doing up and let's get this installed. Okay, spring up what we've been working on. We're going to turn this one over. Like so, and we are going to insert 62B, which is this crucifix looking part here. And this is going to fit out of this ball part here. This is going to be interesting. And it's going to slot through this hole here. And it's going to sit in those two channels like so. So that's how that's going to go. Uh, but you see you've got mine the wrong way around. You want this, right? So you see where that's, it's got a slant here, that way. So you want it to slant that way. Uh, now we are going to somehow, <laughs> this is where, this is where I need a third hand. We're going to try to touch the alien on to this. So uh, that's going to be interesting. And we're going to hold it in with the WP screw. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the WP screw loaded up. Uh, because again, you'll see what I mean. I'm going to try and film this in real time. Um, and you'll see how awkward a, uh, a maneuver this is to make. Um, and these are tiny screws, so let's get a tiny headed screwdriver. There we go, that one's perfect. Okay, so there's our WP loaded up. Let's pop that over, over there for now. Bloody screws just fallen off here. All right, let's hold that one in place, flip this one over, and our alien on is going to sit on there like so. Then we've got to hold all this in place <laughs> and screw it through that. Yeah, that's easier said than done. All right, clamps it is. Let's get some clamps. Using the box these parts came in, I've propped under there to push this up to fashion the world's crudest jig. But if it works, it works. If it doesn't, well, it doesn't. Well, let's... Ah, oh, Christ, this is, right, <laughs> this is not the simplest thing to do. But, you know, we've only got to do it three more bloody times. Oh, God. Right, I'm going to have to get up close and personal with this. We got it. That wasn't easy, but we got it. So that's on. So it's not secure because it needs to be held in place. So what we're going to do is take in six, part 62D. Now, it's one of these, but it's the one that's got L3 on it. This is going to slot into this section here, so there's a lug there that'll hold it, and then we're going to put the pin from the alien on through that, like so. So that one's held in place there. And now we're going to do the exact same thing, I believe. Well, let's unscrew it in first. Do we screw it in first? Mm -mm 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 -mm. Yeah, let's unscrew this in first, then put the other one in. Do we do that? 
Do we do that or do we secure? No. So they're saying to do this. I'm doing it a different way. I'm putting this one in as well, which is going to go on the other side to hold this in. The reason why I'm doing that is because I think it's going to give it more support when we come to screw this in. That's the theory, anyway. Doesn't mean it's <laughs> doesn't mean it's true, but that's that's the theory. Uh, so we're going to flip this one over. We're going to hold that both of those in place with AP screws. So let's get this flipped. Let's get that put in. So this is where we'll put our first screw into here. That one in and again. This is the this a piece was plastic screws, you don't need to worry about oiling these. Let's make sure that's in correctly. Okay, flip it back over, take a look. So that's how we're now looking without the uh the screw into this one. Gonna turn this one and put another AP screw in. So this is where we're gonna start our next AP screw just into here. Again, I'm holding it to support out. It's gone in nice and easy. All right, so that's held. Now, there are two more AP screws to go in. So now I've got that actually secured and it's in place. There is another AP screw to go in here, one to go in here. So let's get those loaded up and get those put in. And then that is this one in the box. It's fiddly. Um, and I've got to do it again. So we, we're literally repeating the same pattern on the other side, which is fine. But it's not impossible. It's just, you know, it, it's fiddly. Like with anything. Um, I can't see there being much, I say that, I can't see being much like that on this one, to be honest with you. Um, these are naturally going to be, now these should move. At some point we're going to be attaching uh, the little motors that we've got to this. Um, so all of these fins will move up and down when you press the buttons. Uh, here's where the other AP is going. There we go. So now when we flip this one over, that's how we're now looking. Lovely stuff. There we go. Nice and simple. So these will move. Again, there will be motors, as you can see, there's going to be motors that will move these. So if we... Let me show you this. So when the motor's moving from underneath, that's what's going to happen. It's going to move these, these ailerons. Uh, this one's the same, so that one's the same thing. These will move up and down. There's not a ton of movement on them. I don't think you want a ton of movement on them. But, um, yeah, that's what they'll do. It's a little thing that it does. I mean, this this is it. It depends, you know, how how gimmicky you want to go with a model. Um, but, yeah, it's so these eventually will screw into a motors, but you're going to move these uh, move these ailerons up and down. Um, it's a nice thing that it does. Is it necessary that it does it? I don't think so. But it does it. Um, and that's all that matters. Let's have a chat. So that's that one done. Now I was going to say nice and easy, but it wasn't nice and easy. <laughs> it's um, it's tricky, but it's I mean it's looking good. It's looking good. So over the next two, we'll be building onto this side, so it's going to look good. Uh, those just stick around for build instructions. Thank you for stopping by. Please remember to like and subscribe. Help the channel massively. Um, those just stick around for our bat chats. Well, uh, the release is coming up at this point. So January two thousand and eight. The film's due to be released in July 2008. So the hype has started now and we're all, we're all in. And then the very tragic news came through that the uh, young co-star of the movie, Heath Ledger, who was playing the Joker, had died um, of a, uh, a drug overdose. That was the initial um, report. Turns out that what it actually was was an overdose as such. I mean, it was, um, but it was, um, it was a lethal concoction. So it was prescription drugs that cancel each other out. Now, Heath Ledger had had uh problems with substance abuse in the past but um what actually killed him was it was six different types of um painkiller so it was diazepam oxycodine uh uh oxycotton diacotton it was it was bad um and unfortunately that is kind of rife at the moment um oxycotton particularly is is pandemic level i mean it's it's terrible what it's doing but there's a lot of kind of rumour and, and innuendo about what happened um, around about that time. Uh, but the reality of it is whatever happened bears bears no relevance. A young man lost his life. He was 28 years old and he left behind a daughter, uh, Matilda Rose. Um, and sadly, the vultures came out for his will. So there was no signed will. So he'd made an original will that left everything to his family. Um, there was another will that was that was present that he'd have made up that gifted everything to Matilda Rose. Unfortunately, it was unsigned. So 
people are now contesting the will. And I mean, it's it's. I think it brings up the worst of people. However, Ledger's family stated quite clearly there will be no contest to the will. Um, they are not going to. Um, they're not going to claim what legally in writing was theirs. They had gifted everything to Matilda Rose. So there is there is happiness to that ending. Um, and then, of course, Heath Ledger himself got the, the biggest praise of his career for playing the um, for playing the Joker in The Dark Knight. Uh, he won the Academy Award, posthumously won, won the Academy Award. And it's one of those things of what could have been. Um, because I, I think it, it made him a superstar, this movie. It really did. Um, he was big before, but this this movie escalated him to a, another level. Um, and it's it's tragic. It really is. We we lost a great talent there. Um, he had completed all of his filming on the uh, the Dark Knight, um, but um, he was halfway through filming the Imaginarium of Doctor Parnassus with Terry Gilliam. However, um, a plot device of that movie is that his appearance could change. So to complete the role, uh, Jude Law and Christian Bale both took on the role as well. So he would change in his appearance and that's how they did it. So it's nice that it wasn't just shelved. It's nice that you get to see his final performance. Um, but it was tragic. I mean, it really was. And I think it adds something to the mystique of The Dark Knight, much in the way that Brandon Lee's death added to that kind of mystique, the darkness of the character in The Crow. I think it did. I, th I think it brought something to it. And everybody wanted to see um, Heath's last, um, Heath Ledger's last performance. And... Um, what a loss. What a loss when, when we see how good he was in that movie and everybody wanted more, you know? We we were kind of hoping that we could have had a, another Joker appearance. Apparently there is. Apparently um, scenes were filmed um, that were always intended to feature in Dark Knight Rises. Um, but you don't... We, we've never seen them. They've never been released anywhere. But apparently scenes were filmed um, of Joker and Arkham Um that were in for the intention to use in Dark Knight Rises. Now, when we come to Dark Knight Rises, I'll explain that because there are cameos of other villains in Dark Knight Rises. Um, and I believe that that was the orig original intention. But um, we'll never know. We never got to see them and uh, we never will. It's sad, really, but that's um, that's that's what happened. But um, for, for such a small um, body of work, it was a hell of a body of work. I mean, he was in Monsters Ball. He was in um, Brokeback Mountain, The Dark Knight. He, you know, I mean, he, he the the brightest uh, the brightest stars burn out the fastest. You know, um, and it's tragic. It just is. But again, uh, he is immortalized in that movie, and it's going to take a long, long, long time before anybody um, before anybody beats that role. I know there have been other Jokers since. We've had two Jokers since, and we will talk about them on this uh, on this uh, build. But um, let's be honest. When they were saying that um, no one will ever beat Jack Nicholson, I mean, he knocked out the park. He didn't He didn't just do a better job than Jack Nicholson. Um, he absolutely knocked out the park. Um, I wouldn't say it's the most faithful um, portrayal of the Joker on film. Um but for the Nolan Joker, it's perfect. It's not it's not comic accurate by any means, but for that film, for that role, he absolutely nails it. He really does. And um, you can still feel it now. You can see, you go to any comic con, you see him being cos uh, cosplaying as him and just how big that character was. It's, um, yeah, it's huge, but uh, sadly missed. Um, here's a, a photo I've always loved of um, Heath Ledger and Christian Bale. Uh, entertaining themselves on set whilst waiting for them to set up a camera shot. I love this picture. Take a look at this. How cute is that? Um, sadly missed. Sadly missed. And a massive, massive part of the uh, the legend of, uh, of Batman movies. Um, that's all for this one. We'll be back very soon with issue 63, where we're starting on the other side of this. Um, and we will be talking about the final, now it's releasing this out in the world, exactly what impact uh, The Dark Knight had on cinema. Uh, tune in for that one. If you haven't yet, please remember to like and subscribe in a world where you can be anything at all. Just be nice and remember, until next time, Gotham needs us.